Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, direct our actions according to your good pleasure. Then in the name of your beloved Son, we may abound in good works through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jonah. The word of the Lord came to Jonah, saying, Set out for the great city of Nineveh, and announce to it the message that I will tell you. So Jonah made ready and went to Nineveh, according to the Lord's bidding. Now Nineveh was an enormously large city. It took three days to go through it. Jonah began his journey through the city and had gone by a single day's walk, announcing, Forty days more, and Nineveh shall be destroyed. When the people of Nineveh believed God, they proclaimed a fast, and all of them, great and small, put on sackcloth. When God saw by their actions how they turned from their evil way, he repented of the evil that he had threatened to do to them. He did not carry it out. The word of the Lord. Teach me your ways, O Lord. Teach me your ways, O Lord. Your ways, O Lord, make known to me. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me. For you are God, my Savior. Teach me your ways, O Lord. Remember that your compassion, O Lord, and your love are from of old. In your kindness, remember me because of your goodness, O Lord. Teach me your ways, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord. Thus he shows sinners the way. He guides the humble to justice and teaches the humble his way. Teach me your ways, O Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. I tell you, brothers and sisters, the time is running out. From now on, let those having wives act as not having them, those weeping as not weeping, those rejoicing as not rejoicing, those buying as not owning, those using the world as not using it fully. For the world in its present form is passing away. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Oh, 
Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. Hallelujah. 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 The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. After John had been arrested, Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the gospel of God. This is the time of fulfillment. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. As he passed by the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting their nets into the sea. They were fishermen. Jesus said to them, Come after me, and I will make you fishers of men. Then they abandoned their nets and followed him. He walked along a little farther and saw James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John. They too were in a boat mending their nets. Then he called them. So they left their father Zebedee in the boat along with the hired men and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. Today in our gospel, we hear the calling of the first disciples. Um, last Sunday, uh, it was another version, a uh, different gospel's account of this story. But we know that Peter, um, who is still called Simon at this point in this gospel, but we know that later Jesus gives him the new name of Peter, and his brother Andrew were the first disciples. And then soon after, it was James and John, two sets of brothers, were the first disciples. And in, in our gospel today, Jesus comes to first to Simon and Andrew, or Peter and Andrew, and says, Come after me, and I will make you fishers of men. And so I want everyone to kind of imagine themselves in the spots of Peter and Andrew. They were kind of regular people. They weren't particularly of the noble class. Um, they were just simple fishermen. Um, and James and John, too, were just... Uh, simple fishermen, just regular people. And Jesus calls them to not only be his disciples, but these are the first ones he calls to be part of the 12 apostles. And if you think about it, of course now we know the, all the, the things that Peter and Andrew and James and John and all of the disciples have done um, in their lives. But if you think about it, just knowing them at this point, from what we know, they seem very underqualified. They're just regular people. They're not even leaders in their community or they're just regular um, working class <clears throat> citizens. They just kind of did their own thing. They just had very simple jobs, um, fishermen. And so if you ask another person, are, you know, who would you, what qualities would you imagine in someone that would be the first 12 disciples of the Lord, then you will, and myself included, would think of all these great qualities instead of just, you know, just a regular guy or a regular set of brothers just, that just were normal people, a no, nothing extraordinary. But that's who Christ calls. And so these, the places of Peter and Andrew and James and John, that's where we're all at. No matter where we are in our lives, no matter how underqualified we might think ourselves or how underqualified we might view another person. Christ is calling us. Christ is calling that person. Christ is calling every single one of us through our baptism to be his followers, to follow after him. And he says, I will make, come after me I will, and I will make you fishers of men. And of course, we know that uh, this being a fisher of of people, he means that he'll give you the tools. 
He will, he will give you what you need so that you can call others to the kingdom of God. Um, instead of catching fish, this is catching humans to, for the sake of God. And so Christ even says, if you follow me, I will give you the tools you need. I will give you the skills you need. Um, no matter how inadequate you may be, I will make that difference. Um, I remember, I, I might have shared this before, but um, one of my retreats I went to as a seminarian, um, they were talking about ordination, and one of the priests there, they said that when um, there's this point in the ordination where uh, we actually lay down on the floor, um, on the ground, um, and it, it's, it's, it's a lot of um, symbolism that comes with it, um, including humility and just offering yourself up to God. Um, and they sing the litany of the saints while they do this. Um, it's a very powerful moment. Uh, but I remember I, I did what that priest said he did himself, which is um, I made a prayer at that moment where I said, God, um, this is where I'm at, and this is what I can give you um, if you call me to be a priest. But then you need this much to do your work. So please cover that difference. So I told God, if you cover that difference, then I will give you whatever I can. I'll give you all of what I can um, as, as one of your priests for Jesus Christ. Um, so far, it's working out. Um, but that's kind of what his call for all of us, though, not just priests. If we come and follow him, then Jesus is saying, then I will cover that difference. I will, like, no matter how in inadequate you may think you are, Christ is saying that we are adequate, that he will help us. And just as he said, he will, uh, he will give the skills and the tools to these disciples. And so that is what we reflect on today. That is what it means to be a follower of Christ. It's not about how good we are now. It's about just following after Christ, about doing our best to live as Christian witnesses, to be disciples of Jesus and Jesus himself will help us with the rest. If we, if we do our best, if we make sure that we are praying to Christ, if we're being kind, if we are doing good deeds, if we have a heart of Christ, a heart of Jesus, then Christ will provide the rest, just as he did for the disciples. And we know that the disciples, after Christ went back to heaven, they all went on to do great things, um, and they became saints, and we know that we know their story after this moment of how they, they had their faults. They abandoned Christ when he was being crucified. But in the end, when they, they decided to come back to him, and almost all of them even lost their lives for Christ, but are now with him in heaven. And so today, reflecting on today's gospel, we trust in Christ's word that if we follow him, that he will make us fishers of men. Of fishers of men. And we know that He's calling all of us to come and follow him, just as he called the first disciples. Let us stand to profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son, Lord just <coughs> God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begot not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. 
and look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With confidence in our God, let us present our prayers with faith and hope that Christians compelled by the word of God strive for reconciliation and unify joy in the gospel. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. The leaders of the world act with, the wise, with wise compassion, promoting a preference for the poor of the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. That the poor and the needy feel God's love, loving hand in their lives, the love of God's people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For the special intentions of Claire Delto, John H. Webb, and the Juarez family, may the Lord in his mercy bless them today and always. We pray to the Lord. For those who are sick and all in need of healing, especially Roman Mataga, Manuel Ureta, Victoria Mia Vitalis, Audrey Leoncio, Dom Martin Gomez, Martes Galang, Sister jo Joan Kane, Katie Murphy Boyd, Ina Inawadi and Inawadi Budiaroso. As they receive grace and strength, let us pray to the Lord. For those who have gone before us and await the kingdom, especially Joan Wilson, Mary Donnelly, Victor Santos, Lou Gamarillo, Francis Aramo, Nestor Gatbontan, Rosalia Aquino, Robert Val Valentin, Hermogenes Sabino, Charlotte Walden, Victor Trujillo, Elicio Gat Gachalian, and Tim Ford, that they find rest from their labors and peace in the loving embrace of the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Gracious Lord, listen to the prayers we present to you. Change our hearts by the power of your spirit through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. As I prepare the liturgy of the Eucharist, um, if you do have an offering to make, um, now will be the appropriate time to do so, if you are being called in that way. Thank you. The baskets are placed right in the middle under the tree. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Lord, I just have to... <clears throat> Accept our offerings, O Lord, we pray, and in sanctifying them, grant that they may profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth he brought renewal to, hum to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering canceled out our sins. By his rising from the dead he has opened the way to eternal life, and by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, the Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now. 
Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Social distantly, let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, I take away the sins of the world. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. For those joining us um, through the live stream of the Mass, we will now be making an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Just a few of the regular um, communion announcements as we be, um, get ready for communion. Um, there will be uh, four Eucharistic ministers, including myself, two in the front and um, two somewhere near the back. Um, as you do come up for communion, we ask that you please keep your masks on and extend your arms fully once you do receive communion. Um, then you may take a few steps to the side and take off your mask and consume the Eucharist. Um, then you may put your mask back on and proceed back to your seat um, for the remainder of Mass. Thank you.
Please be seated. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that receiving the grace by which you bring us to a new life, we may always glory in your gift through Christ our Lord. And please be seated for a few announcements. First announcement is that next weekend, January 30th and the 31st, is a fifth Sunday of the month, um, the weekend that we ask you to support our parish's St. Vincent de Paul Conference as they serve the poor and needy individuals and families in our um, parish community. Um, envelopes can be found at the sign-in table. Um, please take one as you leave and return with your donation next weekend um, if you're called in this way. Um, thank you for your generosity. Also next Sunday, January 31st, is our annual preschool and kindergarten open house. Um, this year it will be from 11 to 12 um, noon, 11 a.m. to 12 noon virtually on Zoom. Um, details including meeting numbers and passcodes for each classroom and the school office can be found in this weekend's bulletin. <clears throat> and our last announcement is that this coming Valentine's Day, February 14th, we will be hosting a blood drive with the American Red Cross. Um, during these times, we find a greater need for donations as there is a current shortage of blood. Um, if you're interested in this and giving in this way, um, please see the bulletin on our website for details on how to schedule your uh, life-saving appointment online. Please stand for the final blessing. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God.